quick, it's time to eat at Disney World and your group is depending on you to make a decision. Do you head towards the same place as you always go or do you go somewhere that'll make your whole family say, okay, where has this restaurant been all my life? Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. So these restaurants are hidden gems. They are diamonds in the rough. They're tasty, they've got a nice vibe, and they're majorly taken for granted. We're gonna start with Yasake. Now picture this, it's a packed night in Disney Springs. All the restaurant reservations are booked solid. Other restaurants are pushing two hour waits. And even the line for chicken guy is starting to wrap around the building. So where do you go and what do you do? You see that little kiosk on the west side of Disney Springs? The one with like maybe three people in line? You wanna go there for a quick and affordable meal. Yasake serves street food snacks like chicken and pizza buns, milk boba teas, and build your own poke bowls. Or if you're having a hard time choosing what exactly you want in your bowl, you can order one of the fresh bowls with predetermined ingredients for around $12 to $14. The one big downside of this kiosk is the limited outdoor seating choices, but if you do find a seat at one of the nearby umbrella tables, these bowls will fill you up before you get back to the sea of Disney Springs shoppers. They've also got some seasonal fun stuff that you might want to check out as well. Just check the placards if they're not on the menu. All right, now real Disney fans know that Olivia's Cafe is the hidden gem of Disney World, and I'm going to tell you why. If you're looking for quintessential Florida vibes, I'm talking about the vibes that star in all the big Jimmy Buffett songs but in like a chill island way, not like a weird way, then Disney's Old Key West Resort can help you determine if it really is five o'clock somewhere. Olivia's Cafe is a table service restaurant nestled inside Old Key West and serves up items inspired by the Florida Keys, like shrimp fritters with key lime mustard, Kaya Hueso shrimp pasta, and Captain Wahoo's catch of the day, which I had to throw in the mix, because come on, Captain Wahoo is a 10 out of 10 name, especially for a fish dish, right? And Olivia's is also one of the better table service breakfast options among the resorts. That that banana bread French toast or those spam cheddar biscuits with white gravy and drizzled with honey, just plain yum. Now on the weekends, you can also get brunch options like the chicken and waffles and crab cakes, eggs Benedict. But exciting news, starting September 1st, Olivia's brunch will break the confines of being a strictly weekend offering and become a daily offering instead. So if brunch, palm trees, family friendly atmosphere and cheeseburgers in paradise are big old thumbs up in your book, you're gonna wanna find time to squeeze Olivia's cafe into your itinerary. All right, not a fan of change? You might reconsider after a meal at Steakhouse 71. Steakhouse 71 replaced the wave dot 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 of American flavors at Disney's Contemporary Resort last year, and we were slightly apprehensive about the change since, you know, the wave had some tasty, tasty stuff and was a great deal. But Steakhouse 71 not only filled those big shoes it outgrew them completely. Turns out you still get some staple items that used to be served at the Wave here, like the classiest plate of bacon and eggs you've probably ever seen. But there are also many new and noteworthy items like the cheese to the max stack burger and savory flaky vegetable wellington for plant-based eaters who might be nervous about finding anything to eat at a steakhouse. It's really, really good. But of course, if you're wanting actual steak, you're gonna wanna come here during dinner when the Steakhouse Cuts menu is offered. And by the way, the big, big bonus, no steak on the menu exceeds $40, not including tax or enhancements, of course, but still, that's super cheap for a really good steakhouse. That doesn't mean you're going to get a lesser quality steak than other places, though. The steak is juicy, plentiful, cooked just the way you like it. I went here once and got the prime rib, and it was falling off the plate. It was so huge and absolutely delicious. And if you order a flight of the different dipping sauces, that's right, a flight of dipping sauces, my friends, you'll have a variety of different savory flavors to experience with each bite. I love a flight of dipping sauces. Why doesn't that happen everywhere? Now, lots of people hear about Steakhouse 71 and, and tend to put it on the back burner since it's tucked away in the contemporary, but you can get reservations for this one. It's within walking distance from Magic Kingdom, and it's a great little getaway from the parks in the afternoon and evening. And if you don't make a reservation here, you can always choose to munch at the Steakhouse 71 Lounge and Bar, which takes walk-ups and offers a selective menu of food options alongside a full menu of drinks options. By the way, you can get that incredible burger here all day long. Okay, step aside, Shrek. Ogres and onions aren't the only things with layers, you know. Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill at Disney Springs also has layers, and each layer gives it more to love. Although a lot of people don't know about this place. Nobody's been here. Layer one is the main dining room. Wolfgang Puck's menu features California Asian fusion cuisines, and those options are so unique and so overlooked. One of my favorite things here, as you know, are those truffled potato chips. The chips are loaded with blue cheese sauce and chives, and I know I lost some of you at blue cheese, 
But it is not what you think, my friends. It is really, really incredible. Don't be scared of it. And this place also has entrees for all sorts of eaters. There's soup, salad, pizza, steak, cuts, pastas, even mac and cheese. Layer two here, brunch. Brunch at Wolfgang Puck is offered on Saturdays and Sundays, adding items to the menu like smashed avocado toast, Cajun shrimp and grits, and fried chicken and waffles. And layer three, that walk-up window. That's right, Wolfgang Puck also caters to the -the on-the-go shopper who needs a gelato or sorbet quick. You got several different flavors to choose from here, but if you want to make your gelato and or sorbet extra special, get it in a cocktail form. Yes, you'll thank me later. All right, if you're sick of going to restaurants and struggling to talk over the loud atmosphere, you are going to love this next one. Territory Lounge at Disney's Wilderness Lodge is a legitimate escape. It's a peaceful escape that gets you out of the Disney headspace in the evenings. There's low lighting, comfy chairs, chill ambiance. All of it is bliss in the midst of chaotic park planning days. And see that big carved bear over there? Yeah, that's my buddy. Don't be messing with him. And you know what makes this bar even better? Besides copious amounts of drinks, small plates with big flavors. For all my fellow cheese enthusiasts, we've got the Oregon Chardonnay Fondue. For my charcuterie fans, we've got artisanal cheese and charcuterie boards. And for my friends who can't wrap up the day without an evening, pie, don't be embarrassed if you're one of them, then you need to ask your server about those rotating seasonal pie options. You can also get the mushroom bisque here, which is such a fan favorite over at Artist Point. And the ribs here are surprisingly delicious. I didn't expect it. I was very pleased. Okay, now this is the most overrated, underrated option on the list. Let me explain. It's overrated because Paddlefish in general isn't my favorite place to dine in Disney Springs. Every now and then I get an entree or appetizer I really like, but more often than not, I'm wishing I would have booked a reservation someplace else. But so many people want to dine here because of those gorgeous lakeside views you get from eating at this big boat restaurant. So here's where the underrated part comes into play. You don't have to eat in the main dining room to get those paddlefish views. In fact, you don't need to make a reservation at all. What you need to do is dine at the Sunset Rooftop Bar. This is on the top level of the Paddlefish restaurant and literally feels like you've stumbled upon the scene of some exclusive club. But it's super chill and super relaxed. I'm not a big club fan. You're going to love this and everyone's invited. You got comfy plush chairs, high boy tables, wraparound couches that your whole group can enjoy. Plus, there's usually live music going on up here. Now, while you have a few different offerings like the lobster corn dogs, crab cakes, tables, side lobster guacamole and drink from a vast selection of alcoholic beverages you'll get to take in those sparkling lake views across the disney springs area really it's the best view at paddlefish so that my friends is why paddlefish is both overrated and underrated all in one by the way you don't have to go in the main entrance of paddlefish to eat up here just go up the staircase to the right of the main entrance. Don't worry about going in and having them ask you about a reservation and everything. Just go up the stairs and you can go ahead and take a seat in the lounge. It's a great hidden secret. Okie doke, I'm so excited to talk about this. It's been way too long since this little ice cream parlor has been in the spotlight here and it deserves some love. Ghirardelli Soda Fountain and Chocolate Shop isn't exactly a Disney original, but it's one of those dessert stops that provides quality sweets every single time. Is it overpriced? Probably. Is it still worth a splurge once in a while? Yeah. You're going to find it across the way from the left-hand side of World of Disney, the side where the giant stitch spits on you, which is a way weird statement if you've never actually been to Disney Springs before. So here's a clip for reference. You'll probably smell Ghirardelli before you see it because of that scent of warm chocolate. And this place is popping with specialty sundaes like the sea salt caramel sundae, ocean beach, the black cherry vanilla sundae, Muir Woods, and the magical sundae, which features dipped waffle ears if you're one of those Disney peeps who strongly believes everything tastes better, Mickey shaped. They've also got shakes, fancy hot cocos for those rare chilly Disney days, some refreshing mochas and lattes if you're itching for an afternoon pick me up. One of my favorite things about this is that you get to choose what kind of hot fudge you want, dark or light chocolate hot fudge. Unbelievable. Now, Ghirardelli is a classic, but it can often be overlooked by people who want those newer ice cream and cold treat locations appearing, like Swirls on the Water with those Dole Whips or Salt and Straw, which are also great options, but Ghirardelli is the stop you're going to want to make for a reliable and satisfying ice cream sundae for the ages. Just follow your nose. That sweet, sweet smell will guide you home. Now, remember, this place gets crowded and a little bit busy, and there isn't that much seating, so try to go when it first opens. 
Okay, it's always good to throw a food option in the mix that's a bit controversial. So here it is. Here's the controversial option of your video. The Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery is a window counter service right outside Kilimanjaro Safaris in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, those of us who remember when Animal Kingdom first opened, we know that Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery used to actually be a coffee shop and bakery. This is where you could originally get all of those cupcakes and the cinnamon rolls. This was the birthplace of the Mickey cinnamon roll 100 years ago. And now you can find all that stuff over at Creature Comforts, the Starbucks location. So this place has changed a little bit. Here you can get coffee, but not a lot of different types of coffee. You can get the typical Joffrey's blend to give you that extra pep in your step. And there's an alcoholic offering, the African coffee made with Amarula cream liqueur. And the bakery items are fairly limited, though the options they have still help curb those sweet cravings, especially if you want to try that pistachio honey croissant for breakfast. But the real controversy within the DFB team comes from those three unique entrees you can get post-breakfast. The two flatbread options featuring either marinated chicken or marinated pork aren't your typical pizza fari pizza options. Instead, they're topped with cucumber tomato salad and tahini sauce, which kind of has this nutty, creamy, savory flavor to it. If you're looking for a more typical pizza or flatbread, bread, this might take you off guard. But if you're like, if I even look at another slice of puffy pizza, I'm going to scream, you might really appreciate the uniqueness and non pepperoniness of this one. Now for a meatless option, the team likes to order the spiced potato hand pies, which are essentially fried pastry stuffed with seasoned veggies and potatoes. It's not my favorite thing ever personally, but a lot of our reporters have deemed them as the perfect afternoon snack. And again, I don't have as fancy a palate as some of our reporters, and so that is why they love it. And if potatoes and veggies in a pastry sounds like your type of savory treat, now you know where to find just that. Okay, moving on to one of my favorites in Magic Kingdom. And literally, does nobody go here in Magic Kingdom? Because nobody talks about this place. Westward Ho Refreshments over in Frontierland isn't really a restaurant. It's barely even a quick service. It's a kiosk, basically. But the teeny menu is filled with some of my favorite Disney World snacks in Magic Kingdom. Want something sweet? The Wendell's Bear Claw Pastry is filled with chocolate and sprinkled with hazelnuts. It's simple, sweet, and satisfying. It reminds me a lot of a warm pan au chocolat. It's a pastry. It's delicious. I have eaten four in a day. Want something savory? Get yourself an order of the jalapeno poppers or some corn dog nuggets. That's right, Casey's Corner. You're not the only one providing some goods around here. And can't make up your mind and want something sweet and savory? Then you got to get the candied bacon skewer, which is a very thick cut of bacon coated in brown sugar served on a stick. And if carnival foods taught us anything, it's that everything tastes better on a stick. If you're trying to find a decent on-the-go breakfast spot before hitting up a few rides in the morning, Westward Ho has a bacon, egg, and cheddar breakfast croissant or powdered cinnamon sugar donut holes to munch on. Or you can still get that Wendell's Bear Claw, because seriously, you should. All right, when I was working on the 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining Book for the DFB Store website the other day, I stumbled across the Polite Pig section. I read it over again and went, why do we not talk about this place more on the channel? Let's fix that. Polite Pig is located in the town center of Disney Springs. If you parked in the Lime Garage, take the escalators down, turn right, and you're literally walking inside. This location is run by Orlando restaurant royalty, James and Julie Petrakis, in partnership with chef Brian Petrakis which is a pretty big deal for locals who know these barbecue connoisseurs for their other Orlando restaurants like the Ravenous Pig and Cask and Larder, both of which focus on using local seasonal ingredients. This is one of several barbecue joints on Disney property, but it stands out for its modern variety of wood-fired, smoked, and grilled items. The barbecue offerings go beyond your standard pulled pork variety, too. You can get those burnt ends barbecue meatballs, the low and slow brisket with pimento cheese, pickled jalapenos, and onion straws, and the southern pig pulled pork with some of that tangy mustard barbecue. Barbecue. The Polite Pig also has a wide selection of drinks on tap. In fact, on top of all those drinks on tap, the Polite Pig also has a bourbon bar with over 50 bourbons to choose from. Now, when it comes to desserts, go ahead and grab yourself a slice of pie here, like the orange blossom or the buttermilk chest pie, which is one of my favorites. It is truly, truly incredible. I'm seriously a huge fan of the Polite Pig, but don't just take my word for it. This restaurant was recently praised by the Michelin Guide, which is a publication that recognizes restaurants that go above and beyond with their food quality and service. The Polite Pig was ranked up there as having some of the best food, along with other pricier Disney World restaurants like California Grill, Citrico's, and Morimoto Asia. Talk about competing with the big dogs. All right, hitting up a food truck on your Disney World vacation may not seem like a first resort option for Disney Springs, but let me give you 
four solid reasons why it might be. One, it's quicker than eating at a table service restaurant, so if you got more shops to explore and only so much time to do so, the food trucks refuel you on the go over there in Disney Springs. Two, there are a variety of different options to choose from. Want a hot dog? Go to Hot Diggity Dogs. Want some authentic street tacos? Four Rivers Cantina Barbacoa. Want something plant-based? Local Green Orlando is for you. Want mac and cheese? Go to Mac and Cheese. Creative name, but at least it doesn't mislead you. And three, they're not going to break the bank. Depending on what you order, you're looking at entrees for adults priced around $14.99 and under, which I know sounds shocking, but for Disney World, that's a great deal. And finally, they're actually really good with a variety of different options that go beyond just the standard beef taco or plain Jane hot dogs. Nothing wrong with those, but it's nice to know variety exists here. Just be wary. The food truck hours are a little unpredictable. During the week, the food trucks are only open between 5 and 10.30 p.m. Fridays, they're open between 3 and 11.30 p.m. And on the weekends, they're open between 12 and 11.30 p.m. So don't plan on eating lunch at any of these places unless you're visiting Disney Springs on a Saturday or Sunday. Next up on our underrated secret restaurants list, we're headed to Bar Riva. It's half pool bar, half lounge, half indoors, half outdoors, but altogether, it's 100% an underrated gem at Disney's Riviera Resort. Bar Riva is located just around the corner from the Disney's Riviera Resort quick service Prima Piatto. And yes, you can get standard poolside drinks here like sangrias, pina coladas, and frosés, but you've been sleeping on the food options here, friends. The food quality at Bar Riva serves European and Mediterranean options like the grilled chicken sandwich on toasted focaccia, the harissa marinated grilled vegetable skewer that can also be ordered with grilled shrimp or chicken for a little extra worth it and the baked brie and puff pastry, because leave it to us to find melty cheese everywhere we go. Not to mention all those cocktails and drinks that are made to order to help guarantee a beverage is gonna be customized to fit your personal preference. It's a fancy pool bar, and if you happen to be over at Riviera Resort, you don't wanna miss this one. All right, I know time is key on a Disney World vacation, so lots of times I'll talk about a Disney World restaurant and measure its value by saying if it's worth the extra travel time to get there or not, especially if it's at one of Disney World's hotels that's not within walking distance to any of the parks. And Three Bridges Bar and Grill all the way over at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort, yeah, it might be just one of those table service restaurants that's worth the journey over, even if you're not a guest here. Three Bridges is located in the middle of Lake Lago Dorado and serves upscale Spanish-inspired bar food. I could talk a lot about the spreadable, dippable, shareable portion of this menu since it's got options like my favorite warm manchego cheese and Oaxaca cheese dip, as well as other chips and dip options like house-made guac and pan con tomate, which is a simple tomato, olive oil, and garlic blend. And then those entree options come in clutch with so much food variety. We're talking fresh salads, poke bowls, braised pork tacos, and steak frites that might just give Wine Bar Georges a run for their money. The jury's still out. Three Bridges prides itself on its unique sangria selections and even has a flight of its four house made options that you can get for 21 bucks. But if that impresses you, you may want to learn more about how the experts work their mix and magic by enrolling in the Three Bridges Sangria University. This is a super under the radar hour long Disney experience that allows you to take a sangria making and pairing class under the instruction of a professional Three Bridges Disney sommelier. Classes are usually only held on the weekend and cost around $45 per guest, but spots for this one are limited. So check out this email address for more details. Overall, Three Bridges is an outdoor, breezy, covered lake bar that you are gonna love. So what other Disney restaurants are worth the travel time? Guess you need to take a bus over to Animal Kingdom Lodge to find out. Sanaa is located in Animal Kingdom Lodge's Kadani Village and features a fusion of African and Indian cuisines. Now I know we do talk about this one a little bit more than we talk about the others on this list, but credit where credit is due. There is no wrong time to eat at this table service restaurant, though there are times that might be better for you than others. For example, if you didn't make a reservation for Sanaa, you can always eat here for the quick service Sanaa Kwamsha breakfast, where no reservations are required. Regularly lunch and dinner do take and need reservations if you want to eat in the main dining room, but you'll still have a limited option of appetizers to choose from if you choose to drink and dine over at their Sanaa Lounge instead. And one of the best options you can choose that makes me happy just thinking about it is the Indian style bread service served with nine different dipping accompaniments. I'm a big believer in dipping sauces, as you know from the Steakhouse 71 section of this video. But my advice, book a reservation for this place before sunset because the best part about dining at Sanaa 
Sanaa are those gorgeous views of the resort's personal savanna filled with all types of African animals roaming the plains. How's that for dinner and a show? It'll also keep your toddler entertained, which is, you know, worth a million dollars right there. Now, if you come here while the sun's setting, you got the possibility of getting a front row seat to the pink, purple, and golden hues painting the sky. Try requesting a window seat before your meal for the chance to sit up front and center in the action. And you know how I said there are no wrong times to eat here? I'm still not lying. The food here is great all the time. However, if you're planning on eating at Sanaa strictly for those animal views, don't book a reservation after the sun sets. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the animals in the dark. You'll just see your reflection in the window. Now on this next one, don't roll your eyes, just hear me out. If you haven't been to ABC Commissary and Disney's Hollywood Studios since its menu revamp back in 2020, then you need to give it another chance, especially if you're on the hunt for more quick service options. Instead of its previous typical theme park spread of hockey puck burgers and standard chicken strips, sorry, I love you chicken strips, you know I do, you can pick from a more diverse spread of entrees like the shrimp tacos, buffalo chicken grilled cheese sandwich, and plant-based California burger, which is made with sriracha mustard, balsamic glazed grilled peppers, onions, and a mayonnaise ketchup blend. And if you're looking for a unique and fruity dessert option, the tropical tart is light, silky smooth, and very raspberry heavy for you raspberry fans out there. It's also got a little ABC Network chocolate medallion so you can take a bite out of cable TV, I guess. Despite this being an underrated restaurant, it can still get busy during the lunch rush, so plan ahead and choose a mo burst. Now, do we think you should go to Hollywood Studios just to eat at ABC Commissary? No, but if you happen to be there, it's not your worst option anymore. Okay, the secrets are out. Now you can take advantage of these unsung Disney World secrets for your next vacation. Let us know in the comments what your favorite underrated Disney World restaurants are too. We'd love to see what your experiences are. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.